Previous hybridization, sp3, because there's four effective pairs. By the way, s and three p's. That's four effective pairs, right? So that's, that's what you get when you get four effective pairs. sp3 hybridization. Just count up the number of orbitals. There's four. Now, there's something called sp2 hybridization. Now, what would that mean? That means that you've got one s orbital and two of the p's that form hybrid orbitals that are all equivalent to one another. But then there's one p orbital that's unaccounted for here. Because you would say that, well, okay, wait a minute, there's one s and three p's, but this is only accounted for one s and two p's. So what's going on? Oh, this is pretty cool. So watch this. Now, you know that that is called ethene. Well, maybe you don't, but that's what it's called. So ethene is a molecule here that's got how many effective pairs around the carbon here? And you're going to say one, two, three, four. <laughs> Remember, multiple bonds count as one effective pair to be able to do what we call the stereochemistry. Okay? So, this is going to be one, two, three effective pairs around that carbon. What does that mean? That means that you've got a trigonal, <laughs> trigonal planar shape around that carbon. And for this one, too, of course, one, two, three effective pairs. So there's two trigonal planars here. Okay. Now that means then that this is going to be in a flat molecule, right? Now how does it actually bond or hybridize? Well what happens is when you see a multiple bond, here's what you say. You say this, one of those orbitals is actually unhybridized. And here's how it works. Right here and right here, we've got hybrid orbitals here coming off the carbon that will bond to the hydrogen 1s orbitals, if I'm allowed to draw them like that, okay? And so there's your hydrogens bonded to that, uh, there's the hydrogens bonded to those uh, orbitals that are coming off that carbon that are hybridized. Here's a hybrid orbital, here's a hybrid orbital. And that's going to bond to that hydrogen and that hydrogen. I'll just draw those hydrogens by doing little circles here. Remember, these overlaps actually don't take place because that will form a molecular orbital too. But don't worry about hydrogen's hybridization, we don't talk about that really. So here's the deal. There's your hydrogens there. Now, what ha actually happens here? Well, since it's sp2 hybridization, 1s and, 2, 1s and 2p orbitals come together and form equivalent orbitals, and they arrange themselves. If three things arrange themselves in three-dimensional space as far away from each other as possible, they're all in a circle 120 degrees away from each other. So then that means here we can have an orbital coming off of here and an orbital coming off of here and now we've got, think about it, there's the one, two, three arranged 120 degrees away from each other and they're all hybrid orbitals. So, all the electrons, the two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, two and two being shared here, but carbon to carbon has a double bond here. Well, there's one orbital that's unaccounted for. Now here's the cool thing. If you put a double bond here by putting another orbital here and another orbital here to kind of like, we'll say, overlap each other, you know, you've got four electrons then that are really in kind of the same space in between these two nuclei, and they're really unstable because really two electrons can manage to be there, but four is going to go crazy. So what you do is this, and what the molecules do is this, which is so beautiful. We do have, though, an unhybridized orbital here and an unhybridized orbital here. Like that's going to like say the 2py orbitals are the ones that don't enter into the hybridization here of the total of four orbitals that you can have, which is one of the s's and three of the p's. This one remains unhybridized and so does this one. And they actually share the electrons between the two of them here. Now by the way, this is one orbital here, so they're really sharing electrons here. Don't think that's a triple bond. That's just one orbital here bonding. So if I just alleviate the confusion and just say this, there's an electron being shared between, two electrons being shared between these two orbitals here, and there's the double bond. It's not in the same plane as these guys here, so they don't interfere, and you can have a stable molecule that's going to be able to form. So when you have around the central carbon, this might look messy now, but here's the deal. That's one hybrid orbital, two, and three. That's three effective pairs because of that double bond, right? That multiple bond was one effective pair. Three effective pairs around the central atom means that you are going to have sp2 hybridization for those atoms there. One orbital is unhybridized and becomes a, one of the multiple bonds. And so you know, because you're going to be asked, anytime you have a hybridized orbital that's bonding, that's called 
a sigma orbital. And the other one, which is going to be the p orbitals, is called a pi bond. Sigma bond is between the nuclei. A pi bond forms from unhybridized orbitals that are outside the nucleus. So that is two, sp2 hybridization. There's a few more.